Hi everyone. In this video, I'll be sharing insights on the developer sales for March, shedding light on the comfortable price range that is moving in the market, foreigners purchase numbers, and look into the reasons why Lento Mansion sold so well during launch. I will also answer a few questions that are top of mind for us in the industry, such as are land prices coming down leading to drop in property prices? And are boutique projects worth buying? I'll be sharing our views on why the land prices are the way they are. And I'll also be debunking the myth that boutique projects don't make money. In fact, I'll be showing you examples of boutique projects that are performing very well, even in the vicinity of the larger projects we're marketing. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's first look at the developer sales for March. The number of units sold jumped about fourfold, from 103 units in February to 718 units in March. This can be largely attributed to the very successful launch of one project, Lentor Mansion. The number of units launched in March was also quite significant, more than 800 units. This includes Lentor Mansion, as well as another 267 unit project called Lentoria. But there are also two smaller projects, Ardor and Kun Seng House, that you should take a look at. The pricing on these boutique projects is much lower than the bigger projects, yet they still offer the similar kind of lifestyle amenities with good condo facilities. The unit layouts are also very functional and spacious. The overall stock in the market is still relatively low, though we are seeing a bit of an increase. But compared to the peak in 2019, we're still way below those levels. One interesting trend we noticed is a jump in the number of foreigners buying in March, from 4 in February to 13 in March. We don't have the nationality data yet, but it could be due to the Chinese New Year period when buyers came to Singapore to view properties and then made their purchases in March. Lentor Mansion saw a few of these foreign buyer transactions, with four units being sold to foreigners out of the 13 total in March. Now let's dive deeper into the Lentor Mansion sales numbers. Since I mentioned it a few times, I want to break down the price per square foot, the quantum, the volume, and the unit types. First off, 94% of the units sold were two and three bedroom units. This aligns with the trend of smaller family sizes. But interestingly, they also managed to sell six five-bedroom units, which shows that the developer's strategy of including larger unit types was spot on. When it comes to pricing, the average quantum is more important than the price per square foot these days. Buyers are more focused on the overall quantum they need to pay, as that's what they're borrowing against. This is especially so if buyers are not too excited about much older projects that could sometimes raise maintenance concerns. In Lentor Mansion case, almost 75% of the units sold were below $2 million. This $2 million mark seems to be a sweet spot for a lot of buyers, especially first-time home buyers and HDB upgraders. If you haven't had a chance to visit Lentor Mansion, I'd highly recommend that you do. You'll see how the developer has designed the units to be very compact and efficient, yet they've still managed to exclude the aircon ledge from the saleable area. So you don't feel like you're living in a smaller space. So do reach out to me for more details. All right, next, one of the major topics on everyone's mind this month has been the award of two government land sites to developers, with only one bidder for each site. I've been hearing buyers saying that land prices are coming down and that they will soon see selling prices start to decline as a result. But is that really the case? Today, I want to share my analysis on why the land prices played out the way they did and why it doesn't necessarily mean an overall drop in land and home prices. The first site was the Upper Thompson Road Plot, which attracted a bid of around 905 PSF PPR. This was lower than the previous Lentor Central site, which went for around 985 PSF PPR. People are pointing to this as evidence that land prices are declining. However, we need to look closer at the specifics of this site. 
With a larger quantum, the risks are correspondingly higher as well. The conserved building in the site is unlikely to be a key factor in the bid. This conserved building can be retrofitted and sold to buyers similar to the five conserved heritage buildings in Avenue South residences. It's a much larger site with plans for around 700 units. The higher development cost and financing required for a site of this scale means they have to price it a bit lower. The second site was the Zion Road Parcel A plot. This site sits in the RCR, not CCR. Land bids for residential sites in the RCR since 2023 have ranged between 1069 PSF PPR at Jalan Timbusu and 1402 PSF PPR at Marina Gardens Lane. The current land bid of 1202 PSF PPR sits in between the two ends. No doubt Zion Road is closer to the city and District 9, but the inclusion of long-stay service departments means that it will not be fair to compare it with other pure or predominantly residential sites. The Zion Road site comes with the requirement to retain a long-stay serviced apartment component. This adds significant risk and complexity for the developer. They need to ensure the serviced apartment and residential components work together properly. Long Stay Serviced Apartments, SA2, is a new asset class and requires the developer to hold it for the long term. The absolute quantum of more than $1 billion is a huge commitment in the face of high interest rates. Hence, taking into consideration these risks, the bid of 1202 PSF PPR is fair. In summary, the lower bids on these two sites do not necessarily signal an overall drop in land prices. The specifics of each site, such as size, additional requirements, financial commitment needed, explain why the bid levels came in lower than recent transactions. Developers are still willing to pay high prices for the right sites in good locations. Moving on, Let's talk about boutique projects. I know there's some misconception that boutique projects can't make money, but that's simply not true. In fact, boutique projects in prime locations can be great investments. Looking at some examples in District 15, like Alpha Apartments and D Fresco near Kun Seng House, you notice that prices have steadily risen over the years since launch. On a similar note, residences at Jensen and Jensen 28 also saw impressive growth since launch. These two projects are within the vicinity of upcoming Jensen House. We can see the prices have already doubled or even tripled over the years for these examples. The limited supply and exclusivity of these boutique developments allows owners to see steady capital appreciation. And with larger projects becoming increasingly rare, especially freehold ones in the core central region, Boutique projects may be one of the few options left for buyers who want that exclusivity and privacy. The three boutique projects we're marketing, Kun Seng House, Jensen House, and The Straits at Ju Chiat, all offer that boutique lifestyle at relatively affordable prices compared to mega projects. Their efficient layouts, generous facilities, and convenient locations make them very attractive options, especially for those looking to downsize from landed homes or for younger buyers starting out on their real estate journey. So, in conclusion, don't be quick to dismiss boutique projects. With the right location and product, they can be viable investments that provide similar living experience and convenience compared with mega projects. I encourage you to come take a closer look at these three developments we've highlighted today. My name is P.K. So from Hutton's. Please visit singaporeproperty.tv for more property highlights. I look forward to serving you soon. Thank you.